Hello and welcome to the fourth pre-recorded lecture for Math 155. Today I'm going to be talking to you about matrices, which are an extension of the concept of vectors that we've been talking about recently. So they turn out to be really important uh, for lots of different reasons, for, um, for representing data, uh, as well as for solving systems of equations and for doing things like population modeling. So we're going to be talking about matrices quite a lot. Uh, today I'm going to be focusing on uh, some of the core concepts uh, around matrices, how we can do algebra on them, how we can multiply matrices and vectors together or matrices with other matrices and some of the properties that come out of that. Okay, so first of all, if we think about some definitions related to matrices, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. So we usually use these square brackets to represent a matrix, and we usually, usually write it as a capital letter. So this is a matrix A, and it has three columns. So one, two, three columns, and it has two rows. So three columns, and there's two rows, one row there and another row there. And we can address different elements of this matrix, usually by using the corresponding lowercase letter, so in this case, lower letter, lowercase letter A, and two indices. So 1, 1, A11 one, one is equal to 2, which is this first element here. So that means the first row and the first column. If we look at, say, A21, that means the second row of A and the first column. So that's equal to minus 1. And one more example, if we did A12, that's the first row and the second column of A. So that here is equal to zero. Now we say that a matrix uh, with M rows and N columns has size M by N. So a matrix with M rows and N columns said to have size M by n. So if we look at this example, this generic example on the right hand side, this matrix A has m rows, so this is the nth row, and it has n columns, so this here is the nth column. So we say it has m by n, uh, it is size m by n. And we say that the entries of A are denoted as little a subscript ij, or you'll sometimes see this written as a bracket around an a, capital A, with subscript ij. Both mean the same thing. They both, both mean the ijth element, in other words, the element on the ith row and the jth column of our matrix A. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this is just an extension of the concept of vectors. So, if we have a row vector R that is, say, of elements R1, R2, and so on to Rn, that is just a special type of matrix. So that's a matrix with n columns, but just one row. Likewise, if we have a column vector, say, C, that is a matrix as well, it has elements say C1, C2, all the way up to Cm. And that would be a matrix that has M rows and just one column. So you can see that the vectors are just special types of matrix. Um, for notation reasons, when we're looking in textbooks and things like that, you'll often see a column vector written like this, um, just to fit it on one line. Um, so people will, will often refer to it as, they'll say, this is a column vector, and then they'll write it, and it might look like a row vector. Um, you might also see them talk about it being transposed. And that just means um, taking something that looks like this and turning it into uh, something that looks like this. Okay, so what kind of operations can we do on matrices? Well, as we learned with um, vectors, if we want to do uh, scalar multiplication, or if we want to add two vectors together, 
um, the same thing goes with matrices. So we um, can add the elements of our vectors together if they, if they match in size, or we can add the elements of matrices together again if they match in size. We do that one entry at a time. So one entry at a time. It's also known as element wise operations. So, for example, if we have these two matrices here, A and B, and some scalar C is equal to two, we can see here that both A and B are of size two by three. So they have two rows and three columns. So they're of the same size. That means that we can add every element together or we can subtract every element with its corresponding one in the other matrix. Uh, C is a scalar, so we can um, multiply one or both of these matrices by C if we want to. Um, and that will just multiply every element of that matrix by C. So for example, if, if we want to do C times A minus matrix B, then we're gonna have C, which is two times by our matrix A. So that's one, zero, minus two, zero, two, zero, minus two, one, sorry, minus, minus two, one, 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 minus two, two. Note that minus out the front is really just multiplying by a scalar of minus one. So everything in our matrix B is going to be multiplied by minus one and then we add them together. It's the same thing. So if we expand this out, again, we're gonna do this element wise. So first of all, we want two times by one. So two times by one, and then we're going to subtract minus two. So let's subtract minus two. And that will give us our first element. So we can think about this as being broken down into another two by three matrix. And our first element is two times by one minus minus two. And that gives us this element here. So you can follow that through for the rest of the uh, elements. So we have two times zero minus one. We have two times minus two minus one. We have two times zero minus one. We have two times minus two minus minus two. You've got to be a little bit careful sometimes with the um, when you're subtracting a minus. And finally, we're going to have uh, two times by one minus two, which, if I haven't made any mistakes, is four minus one minus five minus one minus two zero. So note that we often don't um, put commas between um, these elements here in our matrix. So this, uh, you can think of them as being separated like this. We wouldn't put those dashes in normally. That's just to, to emphasize that these are distinct elements. That's not one sum across the top that says four minus five, four, four minus one minus five. That's four minus one minus five. Okay, so addition and scalar multiplication are pretty straightforward. Now what happens if we've got a matrix and we want to multiply it by a vector? So suppose we have this matrix here, A, which is one, zero, minus two, zero, minus two, one. So it has size two by three, so two rows by three columns. And we have this vector X, one, minus one, two. So this is a column vector and it has size three by one then what we do is we can multiply these two things together. Um, exactly why we can do that, I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. We say that AX here is gonna be equal to, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this first column of our matrix and we're gonna multiply it by the first element of our uh, vector. So we're going to do one times by one zero. And then we're going to take our second column, multiply it by the second element. So we're going to have plus minus one times by zero minus two. And then we're going to take our third column, 
and multiply it by the third element of x. So we have plus two times minus two, one, which when we sum this all together, we can have one plus zero in the middle minus four. So that gives us one plus zero minus four. And then on the bottom, we're gonna have one times by zero, which is zero plus minus one times by minus two. So plus two uh, and then plus two again at the end. So this is gonna give us minus three, four. So when we've taken our two by three matrix and multiplied it by a three by one column vector, we've ended up with a two by one column vector. So why is this the case? Well, if we look at the size of our matrices, we have something that's two by three, and we're multiplying that by something that's three by one. What happens is we can only multiply a matrix by a vector if this part here matches this part here. So you need to um, check that those two things are the same. So we've both got threes here, so they can be multiplied together. So those bits need to match. And then the resultant, uh, the output of this has dimensions given by these outer parts. So the inner parts match, so we can, uh, the output is defined and the outer parts are two by one. And that's why we end up here with a vector that is two by one. So note that if we try to do something, the other, do it the other way around. So for example, if we wanted to look at say uh, X, times by a, in that case, we've got something that's uh, three by one times by two by three. And in this case, these inner parts don't match. And so the output of this is undefined. So in the general case, Case, we say that a matrix A, which is n by n, uh, multiplied by a vector, which is n by, uh, sorry, which is n by one, a column vector, which is n by one, is only defined if the inner parts match. So here we've got n, so that's defined. And the resulting answer is n by one. So to give a couple more examples, if we had, for example, matrix A that was say two, one, one, two, and a vector X that was one, three. Here, when I'm talking about the, when I say one, three, I'm just talking about the elements, not the dimensions of these. Um, the dimensions are two by two, and we're multiplying this by something that's uh, two by one. And that's fine because these inner parts match and we're going to end up with something that has dimensions two by one because of these outer parts. So this gives us something that is two by one. If on the other hand, we have say um, a matrix that's two, one, zero, uh, zero, zero, three, and we want to multiply this by something that is one minus one. Well, in this case, we've got a matrix that has three rows and two columns. And we want to multiply that by a column vector that has two rows, and one column. So again, these inner parts match, so we can multiply them. The output is defined and the output is going to have dimensions three by one. Okay, what happens if we want to multiply two matrices together? So we can multiply matrices together, but again, they have to specify certain uh, criteria in order for us to do them. So suppose we have two matrices A and B. Uh, we say that the product C, which is equal to A times B, is defined as A times, so our matrix A 
times by B1, where B1 is the first column of our um, matrix B. So you can think of this as being that. This is concatenated. In other words, the, the next column is going to be A times by the second column of B. So we call that B2, and then all the way up to the nth column of, uh, of B. So what's this here is just saying A times by first column of our matrix B and so on. Here, this is going to be the nth column of C is A times by nth column of B. And this is only defined if A has dimensions M by P and B is P by N. So again, we need to think about these inner parts here, they need to match. And then the out, the result is gonna be an M by N matrix based on those outer parts. So the inner parts must agree and the outer part gives us the size of our output. So usually when we're calculating products of matrices, we use this um, mnemonic across the rows and down the columns. What we mean by that is if we have a matrix A and we want to multiply it by a matrix B, what we do here is, first of all, let's check that we can multiply these two things together. Well, okay, we've got matrix A, which is two by three, it's two rows and three columns. B has three rows and two columns. These inner parts match. So the output is defined and it's gonna be a two by two matrix. So what does across the rows and down the columns mean? What it means is that we go across this first row to work out the first element and down this first column. And we take the element wise uh, multiplication and add them all together. So what we do is we, let's rub that out. We take one and we multiply it by minus two. Then we take zero, we multiply it by one. Then we take minus two and we multiply it by minus two. Then we add those things together. So we can write down AB is equal to the first element is going to be the first row times by the first column. And then for all the other elements of A times B, they're just going to be shifted along. So if we want to work out what is the, uh, we know we've got a two by two matrix as our but we want to work out what is on the first row and the second column, we take the first row of A and multiply by the elements of the second column of B. So we have R1 here, so the first row of A, times by the second column of B. This element down here is going to be the second row of A times by the first column of B. And here we have the second row of A times by the second column of B. So if we want to work out exactly what this is, well, like I said, we do one times by minus two. I'll change colors just to make it clear. Then we're going to add this to zero times by one. And then we're going to add this to minus two times by minus two. And in the second, uh, second column, but on the first row, we're going to do one times by one plus zero times one plus minus two times by two. And then on the second row, first column, we're going to have zero times by minus two plus minus two times one plus one times by minus two. And then the final entry is going to be zero times by one plus minus two times by one plus one times by two. That gives us a matrix two minus three, four, zero. So that's how we do matrix multiplication. 
I said, remember this idiom or mnemonic across the rows down the columns. And we need to first of all always check the sizes. So make sure that these inner parts agree. So it's three and three here. So they agree. That means our matrix output is defined. And then the size of it is going to be given by these outer elements here. So two and two. So we know we've got a two by two matrix. So what happens if we wanted to do B times A? In this case, we would have ended up with a three by two matrix times by a two by three matrix. So let's put these in brackets here just to make that clear. So in that case, again, these two parts are defined. Uh, uh, they match, sorry, so our output is defined. And the size of our output in this case is going to be three by three. So changing the order in which we've multiplied these two matrices together gives us a matrix that has a different size. So this already tells us that, generally speaking, that AB is not going to be the same as BA. They also, uh, just because you have AB defined, doesn't mean that BA is going to be defined. There are various properties of matrix algebra. Um, I'm not going to dwell on these too much, um, but hopefully these will make sense. If we uh, switch the order of addition, if we've got two matrices A and B. If we do A plus B, that's the same as B plus A. If we add the zero matrix, so the matrix has elements of all zeros to A, then we just end up with A. Um, that's the same as if we added a scalar zero, then we would just end up with A as well. Uh, if D is a scalar, then we can um, distribute D times by A plus B is the same as D times by A plus D times by B. And if we are doing A plus B first and then adding C to it, that's the same as uh, adding B and C together and then adding A to it afterwards. And then finally, if we do A plus minus A, then we just end up with a matrix of all zeros. Note, note that this is a matrix. So this is an M by N matrix not the scalar zero. That can be sometimes difficult to distinguish, but it is important. Okay, how about if we have matrices A, B, and C, and we have scalars D and E, what are some of the key properties of this? Well, provided that our definitions for uh, matrix multiplication are um, well-defined, in other words, if we have um, A and B, uh, we can multiply them together. Uh, likewise, we can multiply, say, B and C together in this first row. Then we can also have the following properties. So A times by B times by C, where B and C are multiplied together first, is the same as A times by B and times by C. We can distribute um, just like above. So A times by B plus C is the same as A times by B plus A times by C. Uh, we can also uh, move around our scalars accordingly, um, as shown here, uh, and we can also distribute over um, multiplication and addition. And finally, uh, if we multiply zero times by A, that's the same as A times by zero, giving us zero again. Again, this is the M by N matrix of zeros. Uh, so, like I said, remember that just because we have um, a times by B defined, that doesn't necessarily imply that uh, B times by A is defined. So if A times by B is defined, that does not imply B A is defined. It might well be, um, but that is not always the case. And you can think about when that might be defined, but note that when we're multiplying two scalars together, say if you want to multiply two times by four, well, that's the same as four times by two, and you can switch those around, everything's fine. You can't necessarily do the same thing with matrices. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Um, there are some self-study problems as well. Um, so you work your way through these and make sure you're familiar with all of these different terminologies, matrix, what an entry or an element is, what the size of a matrix is and how you can work that out, the differences between rows and columns, hopefully that should be fairly obvious, um, but uh, really important to, to make sure you know how to work out matrix vector products and how you can multiply matrices together.
Okay, that's it for today. Thanks very much.